China's economic success is a story we all know. Well, the International Monetary Fund expects China to claim the world's highest GDP growth both this year and next year. Around 800 million people lifted out of poverty. The life expectancy has gone from about 35 to 77 years. It is quite simply the most successful case of economic development in human history. But behind that growth lies a paradox. China is a communist country founded on Marxist principles. And yet, for the better part of the last 40 years, it's been solidly pro-business. China's state capitalist system has fueled decades of strong economic growth. But whether Beijing can keep that engine running and overtake the United States to become the world's largest economy and beyond is the million won question. Right now, indicators are mixed. China's economic growth is set to fall behind the rest of Asia for the first time since 1990. China's GDP growth has been on a sharp relative decline since 2010, accepting a big jump coming out of the 2020 pandemic. What happened? Well, half a century ago, Mao Zedong's Cultural Revolution tried to rid China of any remnants of capitalism. But when Deng Xiaoping rose to power in 1978, he began opening China up to the global market. Cities, factories, and universities filled. Manufacturing, technology, and entrepreneurship exploded. China's middle class ballooned. In 2001, China joined the World Trade Organization, and Mao's anti-capitalist paradise quickly became the world's largest exporter. In 2008, when the financial crisis hit, the government pumped massive amounts of money into the economy to protect jobs. They invested in infrastructure projects like airports and railways. They also racked up a mountain of debt, which fell on the balance sheets of local governments, who then started selling publicly owned land to pay for it, which created a giant real estate bubble. The government will need to keep spending to keep growing, which means abandoning the strategy that propped up its economy in the first place. It also needs to boost domestic consumption and find a way to deal with an aging and shrinking population. No small task. There's also the problem of the rest of the world. Surging inflation has reduced demand for Chinese exports. The United States is limiting China's access to advanced semiconductors, which power innovation, while Western economies are moving their supply chains to friendlier countries and closer to home. Finally, there's Xi Jinping himself. The Chinese president has been on a campaign to rein in China's private sector and build resiliency from the West into its domestic economy. Beijing's regulatory might has cracked down on everything from tech and finance to gaming and entertainment. China's harsh zero COVID policy ground its economy to a halt and led to the most widespread anti-government protests in decades, mostly among China's newly emerged middle class. Now government debt is at record highs and youth unemployment is surging, threatening the social pact that gives the Chinese Communist Party legitimacy and widespread support. So maybe the real limits to the party's goals won't come from the West at all, but instead from within.